In today's episode of Getting to the Heart of Business, we'll be telling you the top 15 mistakes to avoid making in Google Ads. We've been running Google Ads for clients for decades now, and we know all the ins and outs. Welcome to Getting to the Heart of Business, brought to you by The Online Code, where we believe the best way to help small and medium businesses grow is by putting first. I'm James Parnwell. My co-host is Jess Caluso. G'day, Jess. Hey, James. How are you? Yeah, well, and we're joined by Heidi Jones, who is the manager of our SEM team. G'day, Heidi. Hi, James and Jess. So I think the first question might be, have you ever picked up a campaign that's not working and has like made you either want to tear your hair out or cry or I don't know. I can't wait to hear Heidi's answer about this. (laughs) Uh, actually, yes. Yeah. So we, we've had a few campaigns that have come in where, where they're not working, but one that comes to mind um, just recently, it's been a, a business in professional services and their campaign was just built wrong right from the start. So it had multiple issues with it and just wasn't working or looked like it was working, but was really recording everything wrong. So there was no understanding of what was actually working. Um, so yeah, so we picked that up and obviously our years of experience fixed it up and now got it running really well. So yeah. Now when we put this together, we just started finding issue after issue. I think we got 31 before we're like, hang on, this is too many. Uh, let's pick the top 15. Uh, so hopefully this is really helpful. How about we, um, just get started on the 15, Jess? Should we, should we jump in? Yeah, Uh, let's just jump in. All right, let's start with number one. So the number one is having all keywords bunched together in the one ad group. Um, Okay, so basically with your ad groups, too many keywords within an ad group makes it difficult to create your relevant ad text. Um, Also getting them to the relevant uh, landing pages. So it just results in poor quality scores. Your costs are going to go up. And overall lower results, which obviously we don't want. So, so the analogy, I think, is you know that drawer you have underneath the utensil drawer? It's the second one down. It's like the junk drawer. And everyone's got that drawer. I, I think everyone's got one because everybody has things in the house. They're like, I don't know where to put this. I'll shove it in that drawer. Yeah. So you might have pens and scissors and a, you know some sort of random cutlery that you used once and probably should chuck out. You have all these bits and pieces in there. And you're kind of serving up that junk drawer to to Google going, here you go, uh, sort it out. And, of course, then people see it and they're confused and Google's confused. And guess what? You get confused. You get confused uh, answers. You, you really need um, you really need to make it look like that first drawer where it's very clear that all the keywords are in, in the right ad groups. So if you, if you sell plantation shutters... Okay. You could have plantation shutters, plantation shutters Sydney, plantation shutters for sale. They could all be in that same ad group. But you don't want to put roller blinds or awnings or Roman blinds or window coverings. You don't want them in the same ad group. Okay. You've got to have all the similar terms together. Okay. That's, that's quite helpful. That's a great example, actually, <laughs> making it very easy to understand. Well, let's, let's kick on. Um, we'll move over to mist- mistake to avoid number two. So conversion tracking is bodgy and that is the technical term. Uh, so yes. it's either not set up or set up incorrectly. Talk to me about that, Heidi. Okay. So conversion tracking is uh, recording what leads you're getting basically. Okay. Uh, so if you haven't set that up or you've set it up incorrectly, you're not really able to te- determine how well the campaign's performing. If you're not able to, you know, work out what is working and what isn't, you're optimizing it blindly, basically. You you don't actually know what, what you need to do to make it work better for you. Right, okay. um, and then whether you have made it work better. Right, okay. Well, I think a good analogy for this is like a dieting. Um, if you're dieting and you never weigh yourself, like you're not actually measuring the thing you're looking for. Yeah. Um, okay. Maybe maybe you're looking i don't know you just want to feel good or something but if you're actually looking to lose weight you need to measure weight you need that's right and I, okay yeah. uh, so in a in a campaign you're going to measure mostly phone calls 
uh, you can do call tracking or mobile clicks to call, but you're gonna measure phone calls or you're gonna email, uh, measure emails or form fills. They're kind of it. Uh, there's different ways of measuring those, but they're the two things. It's either a phone call or an email. Okay. Don't record page clicks. Uh, sorry, page views. Don't record clicks. Like well, you're gonna record them, but they're not the core things you're chasing after. You're looking for leads. Yeah. So you've seen, have you seen that a bit, Heidi, where people are recording like page views or page click or clicks? Yes. Uh, going back to that initial campaign we were discussing earlier, uh, that one was recording every time someone visited a page. So, um, wow. so that's putting the yeah, data their, way out. Their conversion rate, it said they were converting 250%. So looks really, really <laughs> good, but. Well, it's that's impossible. impossible, exactly. Get so two and a half leads for every click. No. That's it. So it just um, obviously wasn't accurate and needed to be fixed. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Well, let's get on to number three. So incorrect match types. Everything is broad match. Um, okay. So Google has three types of uh, match types. You've got broad, phrase, and exact. Okay. Um, and they all kind of target differently. But if you've got everything as broad match, basically what it's telling is saying is, I just want everything that has to do with this term. So um, you can end up with a lot of irrelevant searches coming through. You're wasting money on the wrong audience. So making sure you've got relevant terms, um, not using broad match all the time, occasionally for here, here and there isn't isn't terrible um, but you know making sure you're using the phrase and the exact more frequently um, will get you better results okay so an example might be you know if you sell shoes you really don't want the term shoes in there because like there's so many different types of <laughs> what shoes. type of shoes do you want <laughs> well then you can go men's shoes but that's really broad too it right? is right <laughs> you probably want something like Men's running shoes, men's basketball shoes, men's tennis shoes, men's cross trainers. Like you want to get, you got to get a bit specific, more specific. Yeah. And if you use broad match and you put in men's tennis shoes, it's possible you get men's shoes, you get mm. men's tennis, you get sort of variables. Google will spend your money <laughs> if you let it. It'll it'll get you clicks on things that are not going to help your business. So match type is going to drill in. You get the right term, the right match type is going to drill in and give you the right okay. traffic. Good advice there. So we'll move on to number four. Now, I imagine that this one is a pretty common one. So mistake to avoid number four is having a budget which is too small. Yes, yeah, so this one's fairly simple. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you've got too small budget, you're not going to get any clicks. So, um, you know, say a cost per click might cost let's say five dollars if your budget's only five dollars a day you're likely only going to get one click a day the likelihood that you're going to get leads is really low or it's going to take ages to get that click mm. um, so having a budget large enough to allow you to get results obviously is really important so you need a volume of clicks in order to get a volume of conversions so if you have a hundred clicks you might get five conversions yep. three or ten or something like that if you've got 10 clicks, uh, you, you may not have, <laughs> you're kind of looking at maybe half a conversion a conversion every second week or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's really like you're throwing a rock in a pond versus a rock in the ocean. You chuck this rock into this massive big world wide web, this, this little splash just doesn't make any difference. It's, um, so I, I guess the question would be for a small or medium business, where would you start? And we generally find about $30 a day or $900 a month is a good benchmark to get started. In most industries, not all, but in most industries, that's going to give you enough impact to get some leads. And then you can scale up from there. Obviously, you can spend a lot more in some industries, but uh, you want to be able to deal with those leads on the other end. And, um, and you want to make sure it's working before you go and, and be investing lots more money. Yeah, absolutely. That's good advice there. So just a, a quick recap on that one. About $30 a day or $900 per month is a good place to start with the budget. The budget is always a common question we get. Yes. All right. So we'll move on to number five. So not using negative keywords. Can you explain that one a bit more, Heidi? 
Yes, so negative keywords are what you don't want to show for. So sometimes you'll find you may have a term that kind of has similar meanings, um, but using negative keywords will help to ensure you're only going to get the relevant searches. Okay. Um, so yeah, so making sure they're in there and excluding what you don't want. So, so Google will just serve that term to everybody and it's like going to McDonald's and ordering a cheeseburger. They're going to give you pickles. No, we do not want pickles. Well, I love the pickles. So I, I, if you don't want the pickles, you have to say you don't want the pickles and it's the same with Google. All right. An, an example I had was um, a client that sold awnings and so we put in awnings as a term. Now, using a single word keyword's not a great idea, but awnings was a bit tricky because that's what maybe some people type in. But what sort of awnings were they? Well, yeah. The so question. then people started searching for caravan awnings and this client sold awnings for houses. They didn't sell caravan awnings. So we're getting all this wasted traffic. Mm. So, th yeah, that's a great example. You put in, There's negative you put in that, super putting, important. Putting caravan as a negative and then it stops. Yeah. So you start, start saving your money. Great. Okay. All right. We'll move on to number six. So sending people to the wrong page. It's usually the home page. Yes. Yeah, so with Google Ads, uh, what you need to do is send people to the most relevant page for the term that they've searched. Um, if you don't, they're going to bounce. So if a user's, you know, searched for, let's say, awnings, you want to send them to an awnings page. You don't want to send them to your home page, which says we do blinds, we do awnings, we do this, we do that. People they're can just, just get go lost well, on, your, on your site. That's then, it. Right? That's true. Yeah. They, they just want awnings. So yeah. send them to awnings. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever been in a building and um, you ask someone where the bathroom is and they kind of say, well, it's down that hallway. Um, a lot, yes. <laughs> yeah, right. So then you go down that hallway and it's not actually on that hallway. It's You've got to do another few turns. Yeah. And, uh, and so you could potentially find it, but it takes more thought and effort. And you've got to remember when people are on the internet, they're clicking, they're looking for something, they want it now. And mm -hmm. if they click on your ad and they take your money and they're on your website, and you've sent them to somewhere where now they've got to click again or maybe click two times, they're just as likely to hit the back button and find That's something That's it. They're else. just going to exit. In their mind, it's like it, it's just going to be quicker for me to go back to Google and find this than to navigate through your messy website. <laughs> so um, you really want to send them to the page they want, and it's usually not the home page. Some, sometimes, but, but usually not. Uh, a few years ago, we implemented custom landing pages for a client. Okay. And overnight, we saw a four times increase in leads. That quickly. You literally just sent them to a better landing page experience and saw a massive increase. I'd, I'd love to say we see that increase every time. That was a pretty awesome outcome. But we always see an increase, like yeah. sending them to the wrong page is just... It just goes to show, people that, yeah, sending people to the right place, you get such better results. Yeah. Okay, we'll move on to number seven. Using manual bidding strategies. Uh, I'd like you to explain this one, Heidi, because I know this one comes up a bit. <laughs> yes, yeah, so manual bidding strategies. So with Google, um, you've got an option. You can uh, do uh, manual CPC bidding and you're setting your own bids for each term, or you can do automated bidding, which is uh, Google's machine learning. So over time, Google's now been running ads for years. Mm -hmm. um, it's learned a lot over that time. So manual bidding, basically doing that's taking a lot of time. Um, whereas Google's automated bidding, it allows you to work on other tasks. So, and generally is getting a lot better results. So using manual bidding, you're wasting time um, and not getting the results. Use the automated bidding you're able to use your time on other optimization tasks and get better results faster. You take advantage of Google's knowledge or knowledge and, and learning, yeah. right? Like, That's right. Yep. Well, it's machine learning yeah. across all of these different attributes. It's obviously the keyword, but then it's if you're logged into Google, it knows your um, your preferences and what you're into and your behaviour. It knows your age, your demographic, it knows your location, uh, the, what device you're on, what um, browser you're using all this information goes into the mix mm -hmm. for google to find you leads just you just can't do that you no. you don't we don't have the brain power to do it and even if we had the time but it really is manual bidding is like mm -hmm. cutting your lawn with a pair of scissors 
like you just it's too much work you're going to get an inferior result mm-hmm. just get out the lawn mower and do it and and in truth you just you're going to save time and like Heidi said you just spend that time on better things mm-hmm. make your landing pages better yeah. uh, improve the quality of your ads work on some different split tests or experiments but there's there's just better things to do than fiddling around by adjusting your bids up and down by three cents and all that sort of stuff. So have you, have you, when would you have last used? Uh, we bidding, haven't think, used Heidi? it for over five years. Um, so yeah, so automated, we did oh, initially okay. start when I started 10 years ago, we were using manual bidding, but yeah, we, we've learned, Google has learned and now, yeah. yeah, we haven't used it for many years. So um, we have done a recent test. We did a manual uh, versus auto test and uh, automated bidding got us five yeah. times the results. So Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. So just, that just goes to prove, right? Just you use Google. That's right. Use, yep. use their machine learning. Okay. So we'll move on to mistake to avoid number eight, which is trying to position yourself as position number one. Now this one, it will be an interesting one. I think a lot of people want to be in position one. Can yeah, you, so can being you in yourself? number one is often something that we'll, a client will come to us and say, why aren't we showing as number one? We want to be number one. Well, being number one, you know, yeah. may seem like the right thing for you, um, but it can be costly and it actually doesn't always bring you the best results. Um, so with Google's, again, going back to that automated bidding, Google will learn what position is going to work best for you for each user. So if it doesn't think that your user is going to, you know, if you're in number one, if it doesn't think the user is going to click through and convert, they're not going to show you in the number one position for your term each and every time. Um, So, yeah, it comes down to that learning, uh, machine learning. So allowing that automated bidding to get you in the position that's going to bring you the best results and um, return on investment. Okay. So I don't know if you're aware that there's actually an auction process. Whenever somebody mm-hmm. types in a keyword, Google has this auction that goes on in the background. And so the auction analogy is actually really good because if you go and buy a house at an auction and that house is valued at a million dollars, you could be the highest bidder. That's not very hard. You could bid one and a half million dollars for that one million dollar property. Mm-hmm. But how much are you going to overpay? Mm-hmm. And, and with Google Ads, you can just overpay, 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 overpay by being number one. And you might just be better off from a return on investment point of view to be position two mm-hmm. or position three or position four. Like, well, if it's getting or, you results, does do you have to be in position one? Like just if, well, if no. two or three or four are working, you may as well stay and in there, people, right? are, people are loading the search results page and then they're scanning through the first results anyway. Yep. You're in the mix. And if your ad text is good and you've set up your extensions and all the other things we're talking about here you've got just as good a chance and you're going to pay a bit less for the click well you just mentioned extensions james and that's a good point so that actually takes us to number mistake to avoid number nine which is not using extensions so yes so let's, extensions let's bit, uh, expand your ad basically they give the user little bits of extra information so um it makes your ad bigger you're taking up more add real estate, I guess. Um, And obviously you're more noticeable. So um, the other thing with uh, extensions, Google actually will give preference to ads with extensions. So if you don't use them, Google will likely pick a competitor that is using them. They like to give the user the best uh, experience and an ad with extensions, giving that little bit more information is obviously a better experience for the user. That's a great tip there. So, I mean, I guess the analogy is if you own a business, I don't know, you're a restaurant or something, and you it's going to cost you $1,000 to put a sign out the front, and you can have a really big sign for $1,000, or you can have a really small sign for $1,000. It's the same price. Um, you'll get the bigger sign, won't you? Yeah, you will. <laughs> and this is what you're doing with an extension. You're just making your ad bigger. It's taking more real estate on the search results page. So you're, you're going to stick out more. Um, it's really a no-brainer. It's just going to take you a bit of time to set them up. So what sort of things can you use as extensions? Like what would you put in there? So make, the main ones that, that we will always use are phone extensions, so that adds your phone number, um, call-out extensions, which uh, give a little bit more, you know, call-out free shipping, things like that. Structured snippets will give a little bit more information about right. either the services or the brands and things like that. And then you've got site links, which will 
uh, add a little bit more information about perhaps some different pages on the website. Um, and then there's also the location which links to Google My Business and will put, if someone's in the vicinity of your business, like within a certain um, kilometerage, um, they will show your address as well. Yeah, that's right. the word. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll move on to number 10, which is incorrect location okay, so, targeting. Um, there's kind of a, a two parts to this. So firstly, location targeting. Obviously, if you're in Sydney, you want to target Sydney. Um, if you're only targeting, like if you're only yep. servicing the Sydney area, you don't want to target New South Wales. Um, you know, you don't want to get the irrelevant searches. Wrong audience. That but there's sense. also an option if you go deeper into it yeah. that allows you to show to either people interested in your area or people who are actually in that location. If you um, haven't changed that, the um, default is normally interested in. If you don't change that, you may have someone, say you're in Sydney, that has holidayed in Sydney, has done some research in Sydney, but they might live in Melbourne. Okay. They're going to see your ad because they've Google thinks they're interested in and um, that's what your setting is. So it's really important to not only get your locations right, but just make sure that setting is right as well. Yeah, okay. No, that's that's a really good point. I know this is going to sound stupid, but don't advertise your Sydney-based pie <laughs> exactly. shop in Melbourne. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it sounds – it's not stupid, but, like, it, it makes sense, right? Like Heidi said, if you visited somewhere – and then you go back home, which might be a different state, you don't want yeah. to be seeing an ad for a pie shop that you go can't go to. <laughs> go and click that button. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to the next mistake to avoid, which is number 11, which is not giving the campaign enough time. Now, this is similar to the budget mm. one. This is something yeah, that comes so this up is, a lot. This is quite a funny one. We will often get clients come to us and they're, you know, it's been a week. Why aren't we getting leads? Why haven't we seen this increase? And well, you know, it's always the same. Results will take time. Uh, regular optimizations are required. So, um, you know, we obviously we build the campaigns, we put all the keywords in, but we don't exactly know what's going to work until we start to get the results and we can start to optimize. And that optimization, optimization takes time. So um, when marketing overall, you need to take like a 12-month strategic view. And with Google Ads, probably between three to six months to be able to decide, yes, this is working and I'm getting good results. And then obviously you continue that process. You continue to optimize. You continue to look at what's working and the results will continue to improve over that, uh, you know, over time. Yeah. So you're not saying you, you set, a, set an ad up or a campaign up and let it run for three months without doing anything. You're, of course, watching it and, and as you said, making those optimizations That's in right. that time. Yeah, but multiple That's times. it. You've got give it that time <laughs> That's it. to run. Yeah, yeah I, I think um, you really need to have that 12-month view mm -hmm. um, with your budget uh, but with your mindset as well. Unfortunately, marketing is not like engineering. You don't just build a car mm -hmm. and then drive it. You, uh, you really need to give the process time. We're dealing with people. Mm. Uh, we're dealing with technology, that's true, but then we're dealing with people and people will respond in all sorts of different ways for different reasons. Um, it's possible that your messaging's not right or that you're targeting the wrong people. Yeah. It's possible there's been a worldwide <laughs> pandemic and people aren't engaging with you as they used to, but there's all sorts of reasons why your marketing isn't working that are entirely legitimate and that are not... Google Ads' fault. Mm. Um, they might be our assumptions' fault. Um, yeah, you've really just you, you've got to give it enough time, and three to six months is generally enough time to get a good sense for Google Ads. It's kind of like the 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 analogy is if you don't give your cake enough time to cook, it'll sag in the middle. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> likes a saggy sponge cake. No one wants saggy right. marketing. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll move on to the next mistake to avoid, which is number 12, which is too many optimizations too fast. And now this is a probably a, a good one to roll on from the, the yes, last Yes, I was just about to say that about. it's a good next, next, um, next one to talk about. So we were talking about doing optimizations. Uh, the problem is if you get a campaign and you run it for two weeks and then go, nothing's working and you change five or six things, well, then you don't actually know what's working or or not. That's right. And it can go the opposite way as well. You can say, okay, well, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and this, and it may actually tank. 
what do you what's what's caused it you don't actually know so doing too many optimizations all at once is just not ideal um so you need to kind of look at your your account figure out what's wrong come up with a hypothesis look at data make a plan review repeat and keep going through that process um so it's like a, a cycle you find an issue fix it look at check that it works and then okay that has or hasn't let's try something else um and that way you obviously you're going to get better results yeah so you just want to change look at optimizing one thing at a time so whether it's budget or whether it's the audience yeah, so in some way there are certain things that you can do time, like so right? if you're reviewing your keywords and you can see multiple keywords aren't working we're not we're not going to say well you can only pause one at a time but I wouldn't pause 20 keywords and change <laughs> change targeting and change something <laughs> else um yeah yeah you just want to be fairly structured and scientific in this mm. in this process um otherwise yeah you might fix it or break it and you don't know why there's all these things running I um uh, I actually really like cooking curry so when i cook a green curry and i get to the end and you do the taste test um it it even it's either not salty enough not sweet enough not spicy enough or not sour enough they're the four s's and what you want to do is you taste it and you go "Hmm, needs a bit more sour and you put a bit of lime juice in there or something what you don't do is go hmm it's not right Tip in chili, lime, fish, sauce, sugar. <laughs> a bit then, of everything. Yeah, then hope for the best. Just one at a time, taste. Yeah. And then there's a bit of this taste. It's uh, quite similar. So have you got an example then of how you might like do this, this um, process? So we did have a campaign recently or an account recently. Um, overall, there was there's about four campaigns in this account and we weren't getting great results. So we looked at them and we thought, okay, what can we do? So we had some very specific campaigns and then we had like a general kind of campaign. So what we did is we paused that general campaign. That was our hypothesis was that was potentially using up a lot of the budget and not working. Pausing that was going to give the other campaigns that little bit more budget to run more and see if we got results. Uh, Great news, we did. The results basically changed immediately. The next day we started seeing conversions coming through and since then it's just continued to improve. So um, that's one of, one that we've done recently. Okay. All right. That's a, yeah, that's a great example. So we'll, we'll keep moving along. So we're up to number 13. So mistake to avoid number 13 is assuming the wrong So uh, this intent. one's a bit tricky. So when you're, I guess it's around choosing your keywords and writing your ads. Um, there's terms out there. The English language is tricky, right? Um, and there's terms out there, keywords that have (laughs) potentially the same, it's the same term, but have different meanings. So if you've got one of those terms in there and then you're not specific in your ads, you're going to get a lot of irrelevant. Again, it's irrelevant traffic. Um, so we need to be specific Um, And again, it's staying away from those really broad terms. If you have a term that potentially is going to be, have multiple meanings, is it really necessary? Is it super relevant for you? Or could you just skip that one and perhaps find those more specific Mm. that are the right search intent terms? Hopefully that made sense. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, Yeah, no, absolutely. absolutely. One example is that if you put in house painting, You're going to get all sorts of intent behind that. You might be looking for a company to paint the house. Mm. but You might also be looking for a painting for a house. We might be looking for a painting of a house. We might be looking for instructions for painting a house. There's four different things. Now, if you're a company that's painting a house, you do not want people clicking on your ad who are looking for a painting of a house. No, absolutely not. (laughs) You're literally tipping your money down the sink. So you, you want to say house painting company, for example. You just add that extra keyword. Yeah. So it's, I suppose you just really want to think a bit in, in depth about the intent of the person doing the searching and what, mm. what exactly are they You need to think like your loop user. One, one really good thing to do is... <laughs> Sorry, James. <laughs> yes. Well, that's the truth, Heidi. We've always yep. got to be thinking like the customer, not like ourselves. And that's difficult when you live and breathe your business. Uh, to get out of that headset, head mindset into the customer's mindset. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just going to say, if you um, if you really want to test this, you, you type house painting into Google 
and then you look at the search results and, and that's going to tell you what Google thinks you're looking for. And if you come up with a lot of things that are not relevant to you, um, you might find a lot of ads for jobs in an area. I, I know I've seen this mm -hmm. before or, um, or, or reviews or definitions. Um, the example I think we had recently was speech pathology versus speech therapy. You type in speech mm. pathology, you get courses and, and, and definitions. You type in speech therapy, you get people that provide speech therapy. So if you, right, okay. you put in one slightly different term, which is actually correct, it's actually a bit more correct, that's not what people are look, using to look for that service. Mm. As you said, when you're in, in your business, sometimes it is hard to get out of that mindset of what is the user searching for. But yeah, just take, taking some time to think about that will, will make a hell of a difference in the results. But we'll, um, we'll keep going. So we're up to number 14, which is focusing on the wrong metrics. I feel like this one isn't <laughs> just specific to Google Ads, but a lot of uh, a lot of marketing in general. But let's talk yeah, so specifically the about Google Ads. The purpose of Google Ads, Ads generally is to bring in leads. You want leads, but we do find clients come to us and they're like, "Why are we not getting more traffic?" You know, we want lots and lots of people coming to our site. Getting lots of people to your site does not mean they're the right people coming to your site. So we will focus on getting the leads and making sure that, yes, you might only get 50 visitors, not 150, but 10 of those 50 might convert compared to three of the 150. So it's, it's all about focusing on yeah. those leads, the things that are actually going to bring in the money. <laughs> Can I use a sporting analogy here that if, if you play do. soccer, um, the, the idea in soccer is to score more goals than the other team. Um, and in soccer, there's a lot of de deep analysis around, well, yellow cards, possession percentage, yeah. shots on target, expected goals, all these other things. And you can get totally caught up on that. And I see this online because I follow, follow sport. People agonizing over these details. It's like, yeah, but you won. Like, you scored more goals than the other. That's the only metric that actually matters. That's true. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't matter what your expected goals are. It only matters about the goals you got. That's right. And, and the example around seeing your ads at positions two, three, and four is a classic one that we referred to before of yeah. saying, hey, I'm not number one. It's not working. Well, hang on. How's your leads? What's your cost per lead? And, and we'll do this. A, a client might say that and we'll go back and say, hey, your cost per lead has dropped by 28%. Like the leads are cheaper. The position doesn't matter, does it? Doesn't matter, it? does it? No. <laughs> okay. So we'll get to, we're up to number fifteen. So we're at lucky last. So number fifteen. Not following up your leads and turning them into okay. sales. Again, I think this is a fairly simple one. If someone contacts you, um, sends you an email, they want you to contact them. They want they're interested in what you've got. So don't spend your money on marketing if you're just not going to speak to them. So you said this sounds obvious, and, and it absolutely is, except for the number of times we've seen people mm. not give any thought to a sales process. I've got these 50 leads. Not One, one person said, oh, well, I don't really <laughs> want to speak to people. It's like, well, why are you in business? Yeah. Why are you marketing? <laughs> but... Um, other times it's like I've got these 50 high quality leads and I just emailed mm. them a price list. And uh, look, the marketing's not working. We're not getting sales. Well, hang on, what's your sales process? Mm. Like, talk to these people, qualify them, ha have, a, have a discussion, like a 30 minute, 60 minute discussion with them. Take them through your, pro like, if you have a sales process, you're going to turn these leads into, into actual um, revenue, which is really the goal. So, yeah, give that some thought, get some advice or coaching on it. Jess, can I do a bonus 16th tip or mistake, I should say? Oh, I, look, James, I, I think we've got enough time. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to allow me that. I, I'll, I'll, okay. I will allow you to. This maybe should be number one mistake. At least it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a frustration to us. Every client we've ever done Google Ads for contacts us and says, I can't see my mm -hmm. ads. Yeah. <laughs> this is a good bonus one. <laughs> right. Now, there's a really good reason for that. We have spent the entire process targeting your customers. And since you are you, your own business, you by definition aren't your customer. 
So when the campaign first starts, Google's algorithm doesn't know that. So you're going to type in a keyword. Um, what did we say? <laughs> Men's basketball shoes. You're going to type your keyword in and you're going to see your ad and you go, terrific. I'm showing in position two. Now, very smartly, you're not going to click on your ad because that's going to cost you money and you don't want to waste <laughs> your budget on yourself because you're not a customer of yourself. So Google very quickly learns that you are not a customer. And then the next week, you go and type in a new keyword. It doesn't show you your ads. You've actually trained Google not to show you the ads. You don't want people like you seeing your ads. <laughs> We're doing our job. So when you come to us and say, I can't see my ads, they're not running. We're going to come back to you with data to say, well, 40,000 people saw the ads, 500 people clicked on it, and you got 70 leads, whatever the numbers are. We're going to come back to you with the data because obviously we're not clicking on all the, the – we're not seeing them all too. <laughs> we're not the customer usually as well, so they don't show up for us either. So that's a that's number 16 mistake. <laughs> that is a great time. bonus tip. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't bother. Just, just run the data. If you're a pilot and it's dark at night, you're going to run by the instruments, not by your eyes. Run this one by the instruments. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that number 16, I think, brings us to the end now, James and Heidi. Yeah. So, look, if you want to find out more, you can come to the onlineco.net. Uh, we've got a whole stack of blogs and articles. We have a on-demand course on Google Ads that you can do. But if you're looking for help with your overall digital marketing, we have a digital marketing playbook process where we will set up a 12-month plan for you. So if you come to the website, you can just click on book a quick chat um, and we'd love to just have a chat with you and see if we can help um, and then take you through our process. So thank you for your time today, Jess. Thank you for going through 16 That's, that's all right. I think uh, more importantly, thank you to no Heidi for sharing the knowledge. I uh, absolutely love absolutely love when we get to nerd out a little bit on Google Ads, <laughs> Heidi, and listen to, to you, thank you speak about it. So thank you. All right. This episode of Getting to the Heart of Business was brought to you by The Online Co. Music by Harry Parnwell. You can find us at theonlineco.net. Feel free to share this with someone you think would be helpful. Subscribe to us on your podcast app and leave us a review.